Long before the spirit of Rockefeller entered the region, the people of the Pennsylvania Oil Valley were living quietly and peacefully. Years had passed since the loyal men of the area marched north to Erie, or west to Detroit, to defend the Great Lakes, and the ghosts of the Civil War were still a decade away into the future. So the brave that roamed the desolate forest with the fallen tree were of the strong immigrant who dared to homestead in the rocky, poor-soiled, heavily wooded area. The Germans, the Scots, Irish, and Welsh, who made their way to the wilderness, now lived peacefully in Corn Planter Township among the Seneca tribe and the Dutch. And there may have even been some French descendants who had long since fought their own war. A new breed was a hardy bunch, uplifting type of folk, whose spirits and storytelling soared after a good bottle of whiskey. The strong men and women who made their way to the banks of the Sleepy Valley arrived with their own customs, ancient rituals, and secrets for protection. They walked along the grassy creek bank to pick elderberries for jams and teas for heart health and to strengthen immunity. They picked ladies' mantle for wounds and dandelions made good wine. Ghost pipe grew in the heavily shaded woods at the base of trees near the mushrooms, providing emotional pain relief when whiskey wouldn't do. Sort of like nitrous oxide at the dentist. After taking it, you know it hurts, but you simply don't care. And I'm sure an Irish man or two carried a green clover in their pocket as a symbol of their faith and to drive away an evil spirit. Or two. Once considered the poorest county in the state, more than one-third of its entire county could have been purchased for less than $3,000 an acre. At best, its farms would bring in little, if anything, over $30 an acre, and the industry in the county did not exceed $300,000 a year. So what little money could be found was made from the merchant providing for the hardy woodsmen in the timber trade. The raftsmen made their way to and fro on the Allegheny, trading their wares, telling stories of a peddler who came before them who rode horseback named Carrie. There on the oil creek in the 1790s, and oozing from the banks was the snake oil that would change the world. It was in abundant supply, so Nathaniel Carey collected it. And he put it in wooden barrels and carried it on horseback along the old Indian paths from Venango County into the point in Pittsburgh where the three rivers meet. It was there he traded his barrels of oil for silver coins, goods, and supplies. By the 1840s, a druggist had marketed it as a salve to treat everything from arthritis, burns, and bruises. And one night, a barrel of the oil caught fire, and a chemist named Samuel Keir watched it burn. And he realized that if he could harness it, he could sell it as lamp oil. Now about the same time, another chemist named Bissell in New Haven, Connecticut had the same idea. And he and his investors formed the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company. And they leased land in Cherry Tree Township. And they sent a man named Drake to Titusville with a pocket full of money to hire a driller to pump the oil out of the ground. On August 27, 1859, Drake did just that. And the world has never been the same. Once the news of the oil started leaking its way out of the region, Thousands flocked to the area to get their fortune. Overnight, the quiet, lazy oil creek valley became flooded with investors, bankers, drillers, coopers, merchants, and teamsters. Some arrived by railroad, others on steamships who made their way up the Allegheny River. Now at the same time, the country was in the beginning stages of civil unrest. And while the world was being distracted and the young men were away, northern capitalists continued to drill. Lincoln instituted his first tax on a barrel of oil, which helped to pay and clothe the Union Army. 
which may have helped to win the war. After the Civil War, and for those men lucky enough to survive, they made their way home to restore what fortunes they had left, carrying with them the paper greenbacks now considered money. The new legal tender was printed as United States currency as a future replacement to their coins. By December 1864, Choice Oil Lands was selling for three to $5,000 per acre in the county and one sold for $45,000. The yield from oil in 1863 was over $50 million in the Oil Valley. Unfortunately, for the original homesteaders, a branch of their ancient elder bush was not enough to break the Standard Oil curse. For it's alleged by Ida Tarbell in 1902 that Rockefeller had strong-armed his way in the area and bought out every local producer, refiner, cooper, and driller operating in the Oil Valley. The Standard Oil Monopoly was born. The Pennsylvania players in the original Monopoly game have long been forgotten, and the cast of characters and their stories seldom discussed. Until now, they have been hidden from view. But lucky for you, I'm here to tell you about the players, their life, their families, and the legend of a Native American spirit that haunts his stolen Oil Creek lands. Stay tuned for a celestial story about the night oil industry was born.